What fortunes do you see when you gaze into the crystal ball? Welcome to SETI Astro. So with all the very popular targets getting imaged out there right now, I decided to go for a, a fairly smaller one, a little planetary nebula, the crystal ball nebula. So let's look at my acquisition details and some, some cool things about it. Now this planetary nebula is a very strong oxygen-3 emitter, but I did take a full suite of LRGB as well. I had a hundred three-minute exposures for red and green, and then only got in uh, 75 for blue. Uh, but the, the details it look, looked really good right off the bat. For luminance, I did take uh, over 630 one-minute exposures, of which 540 were actually usable. I was just trying to see what other dust and extended continuum objects there were out there beyond the, the planetary nebula, and I, I think it cleaned up very well. And then you can see that there is uh, dust and structure near this uh, brighter star here, but kind of kind of throughout the whole image. And if you do a you know a hard stretch on it, you can definitely see that there there is dust. It's diffuse intergalactic media uh, that's reflecting light from the, from the bright star here. It's really only found in the the Cedarblad catalog. Uh, he was a Swedish astronomer. And it isn't uh, used a whole lot, but it wasn't listed in anything else, so it still has that going for it. Some of these galaxies were really intriguing right off the bat. There's, there's this figure eight double-lobed galaxy up here. There's another one with really nice spiral structure over in that direction. Down here, there's a, an S one with some strong tidal disruption. And off over here, it's kind of hard to see with it stretched so hard, but this one has like these tentacle pinwheel arms coming off of it. Uh, so that'll be interesting to see once we get the color added as well. Beyond that, I did go ahead and grab an hour and a half of hydrogen, just to see if there's any other hydrogen out there. And there is, uh, you know, the, the nebula looks pretty good. And for oxygen, I went ahead and took a, a full 32 15 minute exposures in oxygen uh, just to really pull out any faint oxygen structures that may have been down uh, deep inside the, the crystal ball here. For both of which, I did do continuum subtraction on. So I was left with just the, the pure signal. So here's the, the pure oxygen signal with no continuum. And then here's the, uh, the hydrogen. Then what I did, I, I combined them in a traditional HOO palette. So now this is just continuum subtracted narrow band data here. And you can see there's, there's really nothing else anywhere. There's a little bit that was kind of down by that star as just some artifacts. And, and that's it. There's black nothingness otherwise for, for narrow band information here. For the RGB combination, I did run it through SPCC to try to get the, the colors as accurate as I could. I used a G2V as my reference white frame. You know, that's what our sun is, so that's, that's what I went with. And you can see the nebula itself is quite, quite oxygen rich. It's that oxygen three kind of greeny teal color for sure. Still linear in the RGB. Even here, it, I mean, it, it looks really cool already, uh, but I did go ahead and remove the stars and then uh, stretch it into nonlinear and then do some tweaks with curves to try to bring out some things. And then what I ended up doing is taking the narrow band continuum subtracted data and blending that into the RGB data such that I was trying to get the, the best of both wor worlds. I wanted the detail that the narrow band continuum subtracted data was getting me, but also the RGB aspect of it, since we did have the luminance in there and it had all that extra, any extra light that would be in the planetary nebula would be adding to it as well. So this is the full combination of all that. And then I, I went through and did some more 
curves adjustments, you know, to, to what you like. And this is where I ended up with my Starless Crystal Ball Nebula. And now we can go ahead and look at some of these galaxies too. Up here, just a just crazy. It, it's these two giant interacting loops or arms. There's structure down in the core here. Off on this one, you have this long spiral that wraps all the way around. Plenty of interaction here. Maybe it's, it's multiple galaxies potentially just interacting and these are giant tidal streams. These are all really far away too, uh, between 200 and 1,000 million light years out. Particularly this one now with the like those tendrils coming out here is right at about 500 million light years away. And down here in the corner we have the, the nice little S-shaped one with these nice little spiral arms. And even kind of an edge on normal disk with a bulge in the center. So a lot of cool, interesting, interacting galaxies in this particular particular image, along with you know the the dust and the the really cool planetary nebula. For the stars, um, I did do a stretch on the RGB stars. I also did a stretch on the luminance stars. I know a lot of people just throw that stars only luminance away. I ended up uh, blending that back into the RGB. Just might as well use it. It was there, uh, and that's how I ended up doing my stars. And then finally putting it all back together, we have the crystal ball nebula here, along with the intergalactic dust, all these cool galaxies up in the corners. And just, just a lot of awesome detail in on the, the crystal ball. It is not very big. The, the bright core of it here is two arc minutes, and then the, the full outer envelope here is is three arc minutes across, just to give you an idea of scale in this particular image. I did go for a bit of a hunt for these these galaxies too, just to see just to see what they look like and the the surveys and stuff. So here is the the one with the double lobes, and then if you look at the DSS and two mass surveys for them, there's not a whole lot of detail here on them at all. So I mean, I think I may have the, the best detail of these particular galaxies that is, it's gotta be comparable to anybody else's out there of, of this particular region. I just haven't seen uh, very many images of these particular galaxies uh, shown out there. The other one is the one with the spiral arm structures you can kind of see hints of them along along the periphery there and then another one was the one with the the long tidal disruption tail that looped all the way around it and again on these sky survey ones there's just not there's just not a lot of detail in them so i think it was really exciting to see that level of detail in my images here around that one there and especially around this one here there i think it's just so cool you don't see this double lobed situation too often i've updated astrobin with my what fortunes do you see gazing into the crystal ball i just left it on the plate solve the, the Starless I did put on there, it just I didn't add a whole lot to have that as a mouse over. This is kind of the, the cropped in close. I do have the original as Rev C. I have all my acquisition details here is a little over 32 hours of exposure. And then a, a little write up on, on some of the stuff we were talking about, right? The, the size of the crystal ball itself, the names of these various galaxies if you want to go hunt them down, the dust around the, the Cedarblad Catalog 28 object. I've also updated my website, cityastro.com, under the Nebula section with it. I have some mouse over zoomables. You can click and download the full resolution for both the cropped in view and the full view. I have those interesting galaxies and their own little uh, windows here for viewing. 
Well, I hope this inspires some of you to go out there and image maybe some of the less imaged objects this time of season because we're all going to see plenty of the Horsehead and Orion, the jellyfish. They're, they're, they're coming. So why don't you uh, slew your scope over to maybe something you haven't, haven't seen before and, and just give it a go. Please comment, like, and subscribe.